Good morning everybody and welcome once again to our thought for the day for this morning. Um, I hope you're well and you, uh, enjoying your, you'll enjoy your, ta your time with us this morning. Sorry about that, we just had a bit of a... Go. Hopefully that's alright. Something just collapsed on us here but I think we're okay now. Yeah, good. Right, we're in um, this morning. We are uh, carrying on our series that we've been doing this week on uh, the subject of hope and uh, we looked started last week didn't we about the source of hope and where hope comes from and the scriptures and the gospel and all of those things and this morning and yesterday we began to look at the fruit of hope what hope produces in us and we thought we, we thought of hope being like a tree that has its root in all of that source and um, and it produces this fruit in season and we talked last yesterday about the first of the fruit which is joy and this morning we're going to talk about the second of those fruit which is love okay so the hope uh, the hope that produces fruit the fruit of hope is love but before we do that let's pray together shall we this morning Heavenly Father we thank you once again for our uh, for this new morning we pray Lord that you would bless us and keep us and uh, we ask Lord that you would um, uh, be with us this morning as we look at your word open our eyes open our minds open our hearts let us hear your voice speaking to us this morning in Jesus name Amen okay so the fruit of hope is this tree that produces fruit in season we talked about and the fruit of hope we're looking at this morning is love bears this wonderful fruit of love let's read some verses from Scripture Colossians chapter 1 and verse 3 and 4 uh, this morning uh, this is what Paul writes to the Colossians in the very first as he starts his letter to them we always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have for all the Saints so that's great isn't it to have that um, for them to know that love which he has for to, to hear about that because of and the reason they have this love, hope sorry the reason they have this love he says is because of the hope laid up for you in heaven and so it's important to remember so so hope produces fruit in us that others can see it's really important that we hope yesterday we we talked about the fruit of that hope being joy that God commands us to be joyful because he can because he's given us everything we need to be joyful this hope this morning our command is that we love one another isn't it we know Jesus says love one another as I have loved you the reason we can love one another the Bible would tell us I suppose contends for us uh, and, 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 and explains to us is that because what, what Christ has done for us uh, we have hope and therefore we can love and the important thing about love is that and joy in a sense is that they are fruit that other people see this is where our hope is seen by other people and it's wonderful isn't it that one of the things that Paul says about the Colossians here is that everybody's heard about how much you love one another everybody's heard of, of your faith and your love and how wonderful that is wouldn't that be great if that's how people thought of our churches our church Trinity that everybody's heard how much you guys love each other and, and just just what it's like to be a part of that church and, and that's we're going back to our studies at Acts on a Sunday morning that's exactly what uh, what that church was noted for as well and it seems like all the churches that are growing all the churches that are full of the Holy Spirit all the churches that are, uh, are making an impact in their community do so if, if we read in the scriptures and, and if this is to go by because they are loving and generous and they are a great community a joyful community so it's really important that we have these attributes aren't isn't it really it's really important that we do love and that we do have joy and that the bible paul tells us here that the fruit of the source of that is our hope which and the source of our hope is the gospel and so we see this kind of bears through so so we have the ground of our hope and, 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 and is the gospel and all the things that we said last week and, and the scriptures and everything else and where we know it from and that nourishes us and it produces fruit and we see the joy and we see love isn't that great isn't that what we want to see but the key to it all is having this hope isn't it the fruit of hope is joy it becomes evident and the fruit of hope is love it becomes evident a genuine generous love for other people how is that the case how is it because 
when we have hope, it kind of removes from us all of the worries. If we don't have hope, let's look at it the other way around. If we don't have hope, if you're not living in hope, and we see this all over the place, then our minds become taken away from other things and they are absolutely focused on ourselves. We have to try to find a hope from somewhere. If we can't find it, if we don't have hope within us, we have to go and look for it. We need some source for our hope, don't we? I remember years ago going to Romania, not long after um, the communist regime there under Ceausescu had fallen, and they were on the TV as well, but we, I saw them with first hand. You, know, you go to these orphanages where these children, these young children have been deprived of love and hope, and it's just despairing. And you see it in their eyes, there's emptiness, and there's nothing. And they don't reach out to you and they don't want to engage with anybody else. They just were in their own little world. Well, lack of hope robs us of so many things. It robs us of our joy and it robs us of love, the cap capability to love one another. And so when we have our, our roots in the gospel and in the gospel of hope that we've seen and, and it begins to bear fruit in our lives, we all of a sudden have this hope that leads to love. We are set free to love one another. When we know that the future is in God's hands, when we know that everything is for a purpose, when we know that God is directing and, and, and loving us and caring for us, even in the most difficult of circumstances, and when we know ultimately that the end is uh, a glorious one in heaven and even death itself can't rob us of, of our, our destiny, if you like, then that's wonderful, isn't it? That takes the pressure off us. We have hope. And because we have that hope, because Christ has died for us, because we've been set free, we've been set free from the, all of the things that would not bring us hope and would crush our joy and would crush our love, and we've been set free to be joyful. We've been set free to love one another, as Jesus commands us to do. So in the same way as yesterday, the Bible tells us we ought to love one another, Paul says, look at you Colossians, you're wonderful. People are talking about how much you love one another. And if we want to be people like that, then the root of it isn't just to try and be more loving, but it's to go back and to set your minds on things above. And that's elsewhere in Colossians. Paul writes that to them in Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek things that are above. There's the clue. We, when we start, our hope starts to waver, we look upwards. When our hope starts to waver, we look into the scriptures and remind ourselves of the nourishment of our hope. And so we look up, uh, look above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. In other words, Christ has been victorious. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. And that's the key, isn't it? That's the key for our joy. It's the key for our, our love because we recognise what God has done for us. That God is sovereign, that he is in control. And so the weight of despair is lifted off our shoulders and instead it's replaced with that hope for the future. And because of that, we are set free without all that weight on our shoulders to think of other people, to not be selfish, but to be selfless and start looking outwards and showing love to other people. And a desire to pass that hope on. Isn't it amazing how uh, with the news that we've got vaccines and things in, in, for this virus, in the offing, in, in, in a few, maybe in a few months time, things could start to get back to normal. All of a sudden there's hope. And I remember the day when the first virus, uh, the news of the first virus and the success was announced, the Pfizer one that they used. And on the news, news reporters were bouncing into the studio with smiles on their faces for the first time. Joy, because they had hope. And it's, it's incredible, isn't it? There's Christians. Hope brings us joy. Hope brings us love. It's not just for the now, but it's forever. For every single day, there is hope. Not based on science or anything else, but it's based on God's certain hope for the future that conquers every disease known to mankind, including our sin, which is the root of all things, isn't it? So, are we loving? Are we generous? Are we joyful this morning? Perhaps you need to set your minds on things above again. Remind yourself of how God has been good and that tree that is growing of hope in our hearts. And as we do that, we will start to see, as we set our minds on him, we start to love and we'll start to have joy and that'll be infectious. And that's what we want, isn't it? At this moment in time, in our lives. Let's pray together, shall we? 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful new good news that we have, which is the root of our hope, which produces the fruit of things like joy and love in our hearts. Lord, pray that you'd help us if we're feeling a bit in despair this morning, that we would look up and we would see the hope that we have in you today. And we, uh, that would produce the fruit of joy and of, and of love in our hearts. And that other people would know us for that, Lord. And we would be infectious and impact the community where we are. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. Been a little bit disjointed because things were going a bit wrong here. I don't know quite what happened. But anyway, hopefully you've heard that okay and you've picked up the message this morning. That message of hope. Have a great day. And I'll see you tomorrow morning, God willing, half past eight. God bless. Bye bye.